Rainbow Babies. Wow. Dress up Whoa. Monday. Oh, look at this guy. New job. <laughs> New job. It takes a collar to suck off two at once. <laughs> So you, you just Bill? go out, you just go to Dick's and buy a bunch of uh, golf shirts for your new job. Oh, no, I play, I play golf. I have a shit ton of them. Oh, all right, sorry. They they fall off the back of the truck in Queens Landing, Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. She has a bunch of them. Under Armour outlet, baby. It's tons of them. <laughs> I know a guy that works at Under Armour. <laughs> Always got a guy. Got a guy for everything. You need. Well, you're a. Are you a? Uh, uh, Always under the shirt, kind of wear. You always, always wear an undershirt. Usually, yeah. I don't know. I like it, but I just feel more comfortable with an undershirt. Is that weird? Um, what's your sweat level like? Uh, I sweat a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've always thought it can go both ways because in the summer, at least down here in Maryland, like the even today, it's like seventy six, but the humidity is just a fucking bear. Mm. So, like, you can wear the undershirt and it protects you. Like, it soaks up the sweat. That's why you get like a layer of fucking cotton underneath you, uh, and you're just uncomfortable all the time. I know. Or you always, let it sweat through. Yeah, and your mantle. Then you. Yeah, so it's a double edged sword, right? So, it like, really I, I I go with the white tee unless like I know I'm going to be like super hot under like. If it's a hundred degrees out, I'll go with like the dry fit. No, no Ooh, undershirt. Dry fit. Dry fit, yeah. This is dry fit. I dry, I love dry fit, especially mm. in the summer. Dude, it's my favorite shit to wear. Mm. But yeah, yeah the fact always, that they're still making cotton clothes is ridiculous. Ridiculous. But if I have to do collar shirt, dress up shirt, always undershirt underneath. Okay, good to know. Especially again when you get a promotion and you got to go double time. <laughs> good to know. Uh, Welcome like to some of my sports show, Fat Tuesdays headline. Uh, August 24th. We still don't have a good name for this new headline show. So Fat Tuesday's headline is what I came up with. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, rate, review. If you're listening on the podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your local podcast, tell your friends, subscribe, rate, review, follow. Welcome to the Simple Mind Sports Show. As always, we are drinking on the sports show, whether it be Monday, Saturday mornings, Tuesdays, or Thursdays, uh, and we are always indulging in some white birch brewing, our favorite New Hampshire craft brewery down in Nashville, New Hampshire. Address, please. 460 Amherst Street. The good side of Amherst Street. Get down to the brewery. Get down to uh, the tap room there. Get yourself a flight. Get yourself a pint. Get yourself some merchandise. This is the white birch hat I got on. Ray, you're so uh, kind to send me after your last visit there. Ray is, uh, Bill is wearing the white birch hat that he bought himself. Uh, no, got for free. Got for free and did not uh, get F- us anything. Um, had, a, had a hell of a time there. Was a local celebrity for a day. Um so go do yourself a favor. Get yourself a hat. Maybe get yourself a friend one, too. If you can't do that, get your, get your some beer at the local beer store. Wherever you get it, tell them the Civil Minds boys sent you white birch brewing. Boy, do we get a, we get a doozy today. It's never, awesome. This is why having a sports show is fun and never boring. Because there's, I mean, even in the dog days of summer with the Red Sox, act like they're going to blow it. Don't actually blow it, but most oftentimes blow it. You get... Exciting news like we had today. Of course, I'm talking about Cam Newton yet again falling into some kind of convoluted COVID fucking protocol that was put in place. Basically, it sounds like as entrapment for non-vaccinated guys, which I don't really give a shit about. I'm going to focus purely on uh, Cam Newton, his inability to stay on the field, his inability to be a positive on this team, and Bill Belichick's unwillingness, unwilling, unwillingly, yes. unwillingness. Well, Unwillingness. Is that yeah. right? I thought there was another syllable in there. Unwillingness unwilling. to let go of this fucking. And you're asking guy. fucking Raymond? Because <laughs> you I was asking Jesus. I so <laughs> obviously here's well, let me give you the, the raise the wrong guy to ask. If you haven't hit, wink wink. If you haven't heard yet, uh Cam Newton will be missing the next five days of practice. He will not be back till I'm still unclear whether it's Thursday or Friday, but it's at least Thursday. He's at least missing the first Does today day. count. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll get. The, he thought he could come back on Tuesday, 
Oh, no, no, no. Still miss a day of practice. We'll get there. Let me give, let me just lay out the story before we get there. So he's going to miss five days. It's the new protocol. He's tested negative for COVID, but he has to miss five days because of the new protocol, because of a misunderstanding. Here's the uh, release by the Patriots today. Quote, on Saturday, Cam Newton traveled to a club approved medical appointment that required him to leave the New England area. He received daily COVID tests, which were all negative due to a misunderstanding about the tests conducted away from the NFL facilities and as required by the NFL NFLPA protocols, Cam will be subject to a five-day entry cadence process before returning to the facility. Cam will continue to participate virtually in team activities and return to the club facility on uh, Thursday, August 26th. So I guess we just got our answer there. I got, I got a lot out of that, just that statement and what has come out after it. Uh, But I'll throw it over to you, Ray, your initial thoughts and, uh, um reaction to covid cam returning what an idiot what an idiot you have the starting job you just pretty much lost it because mac is now here he's getting first team reps yeah i didn't look good but i mean you're going to be going through walkthroughs if he impresses the giants game you just lost your fucking job uh the whole uh entrapment thing i don't know i mean it's all in the rule book. It's all in the handbook. I'm sure Bill gave it out first day of training camp being like, here's the COVID protocols. If you leave, if you leave the region, you have to go through all these uh, COVID tests and the NFL PA and NFL have to know about it. I just feel like this guy's fucked up too many times. It happened last year. It cost us a few games and he didn't look right afterwards after getting COVID. So this is all on him. This is all on cam. And I think it's uh, as a leader of this team, it's a bad look and a black eye for him uh, coming forward. Nope. He'll be back Thursday, and if it's club approved, what are you going to do? I mean, the club approved it. If the, if you didn't think it was against the rules, I mean, you, if you thought it was against the rules, you're not letting him go. I, I don't. The one thing I don't understand, I think you alluded to it in our text change, like why you got to leave New England area? You got some of the best doctors in the world here to go to a medical appointment, unless it was one of his kids. You know that that would be my only logical guess. Going down to see one of his kids, something happened down there. He had to go to a medical appointment down there. You know, until you really find out, I'll give him the least benefit of the doubt. I don't think he lost a job. He's coming back Thursday. God He's coming damn. back fucking Thursday. He was not. Team I don't Kyrie think was, and Team Cam. I hate you. No, I just I just still think it's the fucking the way it's going. And Bill alluded to it today on the radio. He said, he yeah, didn't allude some, to anything. He didn't until say someone's word. better than Cam, Cam's basically our guy is what he said. But it's he didn't, Cam, say, Cam's he didn't our, let anyone know during any until press someone conference plays better until invite. someone plays better dude. to cam starting week one. This, I don't think this has any effect on it. It's not like he's missing two, three weeks of training camp. He's going to miss a game that he probably wasn't going to play anyways. I can't tell you how much I disagree with your take bill. Yes. Cool. This, yes. This is unconscionably ridiculously fucking stupid. You are on the last and the very last thread of your career. Cam Newton, and and you you're gonna miss a week of practice. I now I will agree with you with this bill that I don't think that it's gonna cost him his job, but I think it should. And I don't know what that fucking witch doctor voodoo is going on in Foxborough with Bill Belichick and Cam Newton, but what kind of dirt he has on Bill Belichick and why this guy still remains their quarterback. And, and Conspiracies I, for losers, bro. Whatever, fine. Fucking, I'm a loser uh, then because I something is going on. There's only there's that's the only reason. I'll get it in a second, Ray. That other than that, this is uh, this is un uh, you you can't get away with this. You're fi- first of all, you're fighting for your job, and you you don't you leave the area for medical bullshit. He didn't leave for medical purposes. That's a fucking lie. It's a fucking lie. You know what else is a lie? Misunderstanding. The only time anybody has ever used misunderstanding is when they're lying and they don't have something better to come up with. That's it. It's a fucking vague word that you throw in there because you can't tell the truth, but you don't know what else to say. This whole, that whole press release by the Patriots was bullshit. All their coaching staff did interviews over the weekend. No one said a fucking word, and they knew about it the whole time. Ben Volan came out and said Cam thought he could get away with it and he would be able to come back on Tuesday, which would still miss practice on Monday. So he voluntarily fucking left, knew that he wasn't going to be able to practice at least Wednesday. So either they knew the rules and Cam didn't give a shit, or they didn't know the rules and they fucked up. And by they, it's I think it's Cam. But either way, Bill Belichick and the Patriots are fucking covering up for him. They're covering up for him, and I don't know why, and I don't know why, especially when you have the 15th overall pick who has looked just as good, if not better, than Cam Newton in these games. After a year, Cam Newton couldn't barely throw for 69 yards. Nice. 
Give me a fucking break with this guy. It's over. It should be over. I know it's not. I get it. And the only in the only reason that it would be okay that it's not over is if Bill Belichick wants Mac Jones, but he knows he's not ready. He doesn't want to throw him up against Brady, and he's just going to uh, send Cam Newton to the Lambs or to the Lions in those first four weeks and see what the team can come up with. But beyond that, the guy's unvaccinated. The guy doesn't give a shit. The guy's not following protocols. He's going to be a liability as your fucking starting quarterback for the entire year. You can't rely on him. Never mind that he sucks. He fucking blows on the field. Anybody who has any any type of – no, you get no benefit of the doubt, Cam Newton. None. Zero. None. Not what an This happens week four. What happens is this is week four, and he has to go see his kids or something like Bill saying. And you have oh, to it's the game. And now you're feeding preseason. But it he doesn't sucks. matter, he doesn't matter dude. He's fighting oh, for his God. job. He He's doesn't matter. As much as I – He has, has the job. As much as I fucking want Cam Newton gone, he has the goddamn job. He's starting fucking week one and then says no implications on that. He's missing fucking four days of practice. He'll be back on Thursday. That's ridiculous. You missed the fucking Giants game. Who cares? It could be a fucking injury. Because you said this is the biggest dress rehearsal. This is a dress rehearsal. Says who? You've been saying this all along for the preseason. You said if it was an indication, yes, but they played – Mac, never mind. I'm not, never. Oh, no, that's wrong. Where you were going to go. With I don't, I do not. I do, I don't, you're talking about cutting him now because he fucking missed four days of practice. Who gives a shit? Of course, they're not. The Patriots never release if, uh, fucking medical information. So why would they have to bring it up? What Boom. are you talking about? Never release medical information. What it's fucking preseason. Uh, you're talking about them covering up. You're saying all the Zoom interviews, they all fucking knew about it. They didn't say shit about it. They are covering up. He left. I don't for, think so. He left. I don't th- the team's not going to cover him up. That's just he left them. for a medical. No, they're not. This is my point. This is what I'm angry about. That they're not. Read the. It's a lie. And they let him go. Really, you're like the they king let of him lies. fucking. Then they let him go. No, they wouldn't. Did you watch last season? He was the he was the worst quarterback in the league, and he started oh. every game he could for the Patriots. I don't He's know. He's going to start every game this year. And I've been saying it since day one. Well, if that's the case, then we'll fucking crush Belichick for it because this is wrong. And he fucked up. Cam Newton fucked up one way or another. He fucked up on this. Read that press release again. It's a lie from from top to bottom. The king of lies, Bill. Read that and tell me that you wouldn't write something like that to cover up for a buddy that 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 you know did something wrong, but you didn't want to get bashed. You know you have to rely on him because for whatever reason, you don't want to start the other guy. So, yes, Cam Newton's going to be back on Thursday and be in week one. Vladdy Doc, fucking congratulations to him. And maybe he knew that, and maybe he did go out there and break protocols knowingly because he knows he has the job for whatever bullshit reason. You think that's okay? Fuck that guy. You want that guy as your starting quarterback? You think Devin McCourty's going to be cool with that guy as a starting quarterback? Oh, I quarterback? don't want him as my His starting quarterback. That's numbered. For sure. God damn it. Numbered. <laughs> We'll talk to Bill because clearly not. We'll see. We will see this week. We'll I see. hope so. I would love to see Mac Jones have a job. I just don't think it's fucking happening. I don't think in Bill's eyes, Mac's ready. What do you think, Ray? What do you think? It, uh, what do you think this week looks like coming up uh, with Mac Jones here? Going to get all the reps. He's going to get everything. He's going to get. Uh, I don't know what it means by can we be back Thursday? Will we be back for practice Thursday? Is there a time limit that he can come back? Will he be in the building? Does he have to pass more tests? I don't know, but either way, we know that in the one joint practice on Wednesday, it's the Mac Jones show. He's getting every single rep. He is, and it, like we've been saying all along, because there's only three preseason games. This is the dress rehearsal. This is when you're going to see all the stars play into the third quarter. Uh, the guys that aren't going to make the team pretty much, you know, won't see the light of the field. So I think this is Mac Jones' week to really shine. If he can go out there, make a good impression on Bill, and show that he can actually lead this team and have a good practice. Obviously, today he didn't have it. That was the reports out of practice today that he didn't look too great with the ones. But if he goes out there, looks great Sunday playing the Giants, the last preseason game looks, looks great, has good rapport with the starters because you're going to see all of them out there. Uh, then, yeah, it's Max's job to lose. Bill, you disagree, I'm assuming? Yeah, I, I don't think that, you know, I've been saying, yeah, week three should be, but I don't think they're going to do it. I just think you got to buy. You didn't have a preseason last year. You're going to see what, yeah, of course, Max going to play, but I expect to see a lot more Brian Hoyer than Mac Jones, especially in the second half. If you're going to cut, I don't expect Mac Jones to, play it well into the second half. I don't expect any of the starters to play well into the second half. They're just throwing them in for reps. I think I especially against practice with the giants used to look at a team like Philadelphia that benched all their starters against the Patriots after they kicked the shit out of the Patriots all week in practice. Like I just feel like the Patriots are going to do that. You know, you just back to back joint practices. 
Now you got a uh, bye week basically before the fucking regular season. You go to the, give those guys extra rest. You have an extra game in the regular season. Now week 17, you're just going to build it. In. I just don't see the, the build up. Bill's going to use it the, the first four weeks, kind of like he does every year as an extension to training camp. I don't expect them to play all. And I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I, I think you're going to see less of the starters than you have in the last couple of games. The only thing I'll say about that, I, like you, you have, we're looking at the quarterback thing from two lenses, from the logical lens and apparently from Bill Belichick's lens, which usually is hand in hand, but with Cam Newton, for whatever reason, it's not. So uh, logically you say you got a real quarterback competition. One of them just deemed himself ineligible for a fucking week for being an asshole. The other one's a rookie. You kind of got to know who's going to be the guy out there. Even if, even if, you want Cam Newton to start the season to continue to uh, mature Mac Jones. I still want to see him against ones in game action to know that in week five, we've got a little tape of what this is going to look like. What do we need to work on for the next four weeks? I disagree. I think Matt Jones is playing not maybe, maybe not in the second half against the threes and the fours. That'll tell me that he's closer to the starting position uh, than not. He's going to start, you know, you know what I'd like to see after this fucking Cam Newton debacle, Cam Newton's getting week one. I, 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 I agree with you. I, I'm not coming off of that. But I'd like to see Mac Jones get the start, play a good portion of the first quarter into the second quarter. Maybe Cam Newton doesn't see the field. And then and, and that'll tell me what Mac Jones looks like in an actual game. Can, can, is, if he, yeah, because the, the game's Thursday, right? Or is it Friday? Sunday. It's Sunday. Oh shit! So that yeah, you might even see Cam start that game too if he's if he can come on Ooh. Thursday. When's the joint? When's the joint practice to start? Tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. Oh, I thought it was Tuesday, Wednesday. I no? think it's Wednesday, Thursday. I believe it might be a walk through Tuesday. Oh, okay. Um, either if if Cam Newton <laughs> misses a week, shows up yeah, on he, Thursday. He, he, he and probably won't pants. start. Yeah, no, he probably won't. It's the perfect start. build. It's the I, perfect. I expect Mac to play the first for quarter. For sure. Like yeah. I'll give you a conspiracy theory, you fucking loser. He told Cam to go, knowing he couldn't play this week, just so he could get Cam in there, knowing. Like, like, hey, Cam, hang. Uh, we're gonna give you week one, buddy. No, no, you want to go see your kids? You got to go through this fucking protocol. Come on, he's, back on Thursday. I don't want, like I said, I'm not trying to. Go and I'm not trying to defend him. Cam, but like he's he's let Bills let veterans fly in and out of training camp before. Roman Pfeiffer used to get to fly home and come back Wednesday every every week back in the day to go see his wife and kids. I, I get it. It's not a pandemic, but you've seen some of the treatments he's given the veterans. I don't know why the fuck he respects Cam Newton so much to give him like a Roman Pfeiffer shit like that. But I mean, I don't get it. I don't, but he has shown that in the past to do it. So you never know. He has a bunch hey, of golf shirts when he shows up to practice. <laughs> he's, he's got the collar. I, I just think, uh, yeah, I, it, it's it's a quagmire, it, the Bill Belichick, Cam Newton relationship. Uh, this is all I will say, Why? although I sound very worked up about it, because I am, because it's just so, it's just so fucking irresponsible. Wow, good job, right, Dad? Irresponsible as the starting quarterback for your team trying to revive or end your career on a high note to just continue to make the wrong moves. I Like, I don't get it, but... I do have this positive thought that it's not it, it, there. There's there's an end to this. This is the can't, Mac Jones is coming, and he's coming this year. He's getting the starting role this year. It's happening one way, and we just saw it. COVID's going to happen again to Cam Newton. Either he's going to test positive, or he's going to have to go through some stupid fucking protocol again. And here comes Mac, and they go win, and la di da. See you, Cam. That's the path. That's going to happen. It's is not he the only this one week. on the team not vaccinated? I know no, they're not really they telling like but... at 89% or something like that. They're saying you could tell by whoever wears a face wears mask a... at all at uh, the interviews and stuff like that. They can tell, or the sidelines, rather. Coaches need to be uh, vaccinated. Tier one employees need to be vaccinated. So whatever that includes. It, it includes coaches. Every, it not, coaches, owners, everybody except, owners, for, players, everybody except for players. Ball boys, cheerleaders, I think, have to be it. I'll tell you this right now, though. If Even if the great fucking Cam Newton and Bill Belichick's eyes cost them a game because of COVID protocols and those fucking guys in the locker room, a game check. I, I don't oh, that, know, what, that's gonna, that's I don't gonna know what's going to happen. That's I don't gonna, know what I mean, the repercussions are going to be. You can't, uh, you don't stand by people like that. You know what I mean? Cause again, you kind of railroad them right away and make it like a, a witch hunt to kind of catch these guys for five days and make it, a, it like they, they do everything in their, 
power to make you not break the protocols. And then if you're especially deliberately doing it in the regular season, you now you're affect, affecting people's wallets. But that's what this is with Cam Newton, Bill. And I, so I know you said you're not defending him, but you're giving him a little bit of leeway because it's preseason. But it, it's a precursor for the regular season. We saw him get COVID last year being All right. breaking protocol. I would agree with you guys 100% if it's regular season and now you're missing regular season games, especially in Bill's eyes when Max not ready. So if this is regular season, my whole tune is changing. But right now it's preseason. You're still two – three weeks away, two and a half weeks away from the regular season starts at what, September 12th. So, I mean, you're still there. There's still leeway, but again, regular season um, or playoffs, I'm fucking killing this guy, but now I'll give him a little bit of wheel. I got, uh, so if he goes out there on Sunday, throws three interceptions and you say, Oh, this is Cam Newton. Just being Cam Newton. It's the preseason, right? You don't care. You'll give him a fresh start week one. He's still starting week one as much as I I'm don't not asking wanna... you that. No, I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying opinion... would you be like, would you be pissed because he's fucking up in the preseason and be like, this is the same motherfucker that's going to go out regular season, do the same exact shit. Right. But Crazy. you can also say the same guy going eight and nine last week could have been closer to Cam Newton. You could go both ways. No, you I don't can't. want, Cam, I do not want season, Cam Newton though. to fucking start. I do not want him to start. I just think Bill's going to fucking start him. That's it. That's all I've said. Oh, I yeah, want Cam Newton through. off this fucking team. So I don't think no matter what he does this week, what he does in the fucking game, he can throw 10 interceptions. It's not going to fucking affect them. He's starting week one period. And I, That's- and I don't want it. But that that I you're right, Bill. I have that same opinion as you. I just don't give him any leeway for what just happened today. It, it, just because preseason, Bill, I don't give a just shit. Because about Bill Belichick has already anointed you week one starter because he wants to give his rookie time to uh, mature, even though clearly the rookie's better. Uh, you don't get a pass for for being an idiot. You don't get a pass. And I and I and honestly, as much as we've been shitting on Belichick for kind of giving Cam Newton pass, I don't think he probably is giving Cam Newton the pass behind the behind scenes on this one. I, I bet he had a sternly worded uh, conversation. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed with you, Cam, <laughs> kind of conversation after this fucking deal. Or my conspiracy, if you let him do it so Matt could get the, get the game. Um, either way, it's a debacle. Either way, I, Cam's days are numbered. One way or another, whether it's three weeks or eight weeks, he will not be the starting quarterback at the end of the season for the Patriots. Mark that down. Um, oh, can I just throw this one little thing in here? I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to 49ers camp. Yeah, what happens to Jimmy G? They won't name a starter? Nope, they won't name a starter. And Cam Newton just bumped himself out of his starting position with the Patriots. And the Patriots spent the entire offseason chasing Jimmy Garoppolo's tail. Just saying. Just saying. He's, he's been paid $25 million if they sit him on the bench. $25 million this year to yeah, sit on the bench they, if they, they start Trey Lance. They came out and they said They did it to Kaepernick. Ride. They yeah, benched they his they ass. $20 million. Was he made $15, $16 million because they didn't want him to get hurt? Just Tim, saying. Tim Tebow got benched. They didn't want him to get hurt. There was a lot of those. Injuries. John Lynch came out and said pretty much if we have to sit a $25 million quarterback for insurance reasons, we'll do it. They don't care. They're going to sit him. They're not going to trade him. You're paying him either way. You're going to pay him when you trade him. No. No, that trend, that would transfer. They owe they owe guaranteed money. So that guaranteed money when you prorate it over the deal is on your you you're gonna get Only a, if dead, it was a dead cap bonus. hit. Only if it was a signing bonus. Um there is a dead cap hit. But yeah, it's not the whole I don't know what it is. Anyway, yeah, we don't gotta get stuck in that. Uh let's quickly we didn't move we didn't talk about the second preseason game. We have not been on the air since then. So uh let's dial back the Cam Mac thing and just who uh, who did look better against the scrubs of the Eagles who started fucking nobody, a sham game, um, which again leads me to Mac Jones because everyone wants to go bananas over Cam Newton's eight for nine, hundred yards and a touchdown. Uh, was he making any throws that wowed you, Ray? The only one was Jacoby Myers touchdown. That was the only one. Did that, that wow was, you? That guy well, was wide fucking But open. he also moved up in the pocket. I think that was a, like, you don't see him kind it of. It was over five yards as well. Good God has the bar dropped for Cam Newton. Okay, go ahead. No, it was just it was impressive seeing a guy. I mean, yeah, eight for nine. He was in max protection the whole time. So he was getting the uh, – everyone was blocking for him and just the wide receivers going out for uh, options. But just seeing him being able to sit in the pocket and take his time and find the open receiver, which was something that he couldn't do last year, and he threw it over five yards. That Jacoby Myers touchdown, yeah, Jacoby Myers made the run into the end zone. <clears throat> he was wide open. But still, that was a great throw. I would give him credit for it. It wasn't a great throw. He gets credit for it because it completed. Uh, yeah, if he has time, he can scan the field, and when someone's open for five yards, he can throw it to him. 
His, it was over his, five yards. It was over five yards. You no, when he back. has a five yard, when there's a five yard window in between the, oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, defender you. and the guy catching the ball, Cam Newton can get it to him. Gotcha. I was, I was not impressed. I mean, sure, it was the best he's looked as a Patriot. That's not saying a whole lot. That is not saying a whole lot. And I don't think it was. The Seattle game was the best he looked as a Patriot. So I don't get, I don't get the analysis from that game. I, I just think Cam Newton has been so bad for so long that to see him look like a competent guy back there was wow. And you want to call it a great pass. It was just, it was a fucking drag route against a weak zone. What I, what am I missing with the Cam Newton thing? Mac Jones, Bill looked a hell of a lot more impressive to his two passes to Gunnar Oshevsky to a, a third and 13 out of his own end zone to a couple plays that got brought back on holding uh, on third down or on second downs. One to Nikhil Harry, who we'll get to the bomb to Nikhil Harry. The, that should the, have been a fucking touchdown. The polite euthanization of, of Nikhil Harry. You throw him <laughs> and just fucking end his life. Uh, Mac, Mac Jones is making every good, like making me go, oh, nice throw. And he was playing against the same guys Cam was this game. The, they were both second stringers. So I don't want to hear that. I wasn't impressed by Cam Newton. I know I sound biased here, but it looked real fucking vanilla and it, it didn't do a lot for me. Mac Jones did. No, I definitely not. a. I didn't think Cam was that great. Over impressive. Again, the, the max protection thing is one thing, you know, you're, you're trying to build time. You can't do that against real NFL defenses. You can't play like it was out of necessity too. Cause you had zero tight ends. So you had no one to play those positions. So you had to go jumbo and, and you're trying to protect Cam Newton because again, you need to build time for him to throw the football. I thought Mac was w- a lot more impressive and you saw the difference in the offense. I mean, I think that's a big difference where you, you see him always 11 to 13, right? And yeah, uh, 13, 13, 13 and 19. And he hit like 10 straight. And then uh, that was a dime to Nikhil Harry. He dropped that in perfectly. <laughs> Nikhil Harry d- had to he just, jump for it. Can you spend a little bit of time on that fucking play? Because oh my god, I just half I of Twitter was sending uh, R.I.P. and half the other half was sending thoughts and prayers. And one half was laughing, the other half wasn't. And it Dude, was amazing. <laughs> right away, I th- I texted you. I was like, that ball was a dime. He jumps. He jumps. If he extends his arms, any inch, or if he runs through it. Dude. Oh, run through it. You're running to the end zone. And this has been a major problem with fucking to kill Harry is the Patriots are pissed off because he, he jumps when he doesn't have to. So this is not the first time he's done this. This any is every athletic, time he tries to catch the football. Any athletic instinct at all tells you to just go get the ball and run under. This guy, he looks like that kid in gym class who, like, he might be fast, but, like, you throw him out there with a ball and he's just, like, Get like a know fucking baby giraffe doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. That's race cousin. Harry. Race cousin was in our gym class. He, it. <laughs> he was just like that. Yeah. Crazy, eh? Um, I get that. Uh, yeah. So I thought I, the pumping up of Cam Newton, I guess it was worth it. And I guess it gave him the confidence to, uh, to leave the facility and fuck the COVID protocols. Cause he was anointed the job. That must've been it. Cause I was not thoroughly impressed with eight for nine on some, little lollipops uh what else did we learn anything the defense i mean the that Eagles jude on in. That that jude on is a beast he has played 10 plays in two games has three quarterback hurries a strip sack and a fumble recovery not bad you, he Actually, is looking if you're in the sports media like we are we have to say he plays bad because he listens to all that shit he takes it all in and he wants to get better each week so yeah you Dude, he's shit. a fucking monster oh man <laughs> like you can see, again it, a grain of salt it was against kind of philly's twos and threes, whatever you, you know, he, he's still but a team, man. you can see why they, you know, he's the highest paid player on the team right now. You know, that, that he's, that's the reason he, he sets the edge, gets after it. He's good against the run and, you know, hopefully he doesn't morph into a Dayless Thomas coming over from Baltimore, but right now and in, in a small sample size of 10 plays, he looks the part. Yeah, it doesn't but sound like it, real, it, it sounds right. like like to your point, he, you know, he want he told his reporters after <laughs> the first preseason before the first preseason game. If I sound like if I play like shit, let me know it. Um, he's coming out there intense. He's coming out there to play every single snap. Um, he, you know, he looks like a football guy. Josh Uche, ouch. So he his injury came back. He, it was it's not he's not out. I don't think he'll play this. I think week. it's week to week. It's not he's like got, a long term thing. He's got three weeks to come back. I expect him back week one. Uh, two names uh, jumped out to me, and by me, I mean some of the professionals covering the team who I uh, ripped this off of. Chase Winovich, uh, 
was quoted saying he did his best to buy into Belichick ways uh, by that. I, it's I your think, third season, bro. Your I third fucking season. He, he's on the edge of getting he's cut. Fucking he had an crazy. injury. Um, should he be, should he make this team or could, no. should he make the team? No. Who's that guy that got third round Perkins? Ronnie yeah. Perkins. Ronnie Perkins, baby. I mean, that's the guy that's going to take. He gets off the edge faster. He, he's better against the run. Yeah, he's a weed guy. But what Winovich, like you saw him go in the doghouse last year when when he can't, he can't stop the run. He and then he he was over. Um, he was running past quarterback a couple of plays. I don't think Winovich was that great. I don't. I he, I thought he was on the outside looking in. He started camp late. There was a weird thing where he was out in mini camp too. I I think he's on on the roster bubble. Truthfully, I think you got to trade him though. I I think that his uh. uh his skill yeah, set. you can get something for his him. His skill yeah. set to get to the quarterback is is uh, valuable across the league, and a lot of teams do not value the versatility that the Patriots do in that position. So I think that I don't think he should be an outright cut, even if he doesn't get traded before the season. If you gotta, you know, whatever, stash him and and try and get a deal done. I think that you should do that. I don't think you should waste that asset because he no, doesn't I don't have a skill set. I don't think you're cutting him. I, I think he, he's definitely worth a, a yeah. trade. You, what was he, the third round pick, second round pick? Third. I don't remember, third. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but uh, tune in on Wednesday. We'll be talking about the depth chart. There, It's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. There's a lot of good players on this team, especially in the front seven. Speaking of that, uh, this Harvey Lang guy made a couple plays in that game. Uh, the experts are high on him as a depth linebacker. Um, don't have much to say, just a name to throw out there. A name that we should look at is... Quinn Ah, uh, he sucked. <laughs> he, he, he was so disappointing. <laughs> it was so disappointing. Holy shit, dude. Talk about kicking yourself out of the league or yeah, kicking Nick, yourself Nick, in your own ass. Get it? Nick, Nick Folks back in practice today went three for five. Wasn't sure of the yardage, but he was he's back. You know, he probably won't he might not play this week if he's still nursing an injury, but uh Titties needs to start kicking better. He's off. Dude, He's this off could be 2019 all over again. We might be praying every time a kick gets gets put up there, right? It, uh, if Nick Folk can't get over this injury and get back to where he was. I can't. I Josh <laughs> Richardson just got two years, $24 million. I just can't with this fucking Celtics team. I just Ooh, that's fucking a, can't. That's a bad deal. Okay, we'll get to Oh, that. God damn it. Uh, before we do that, oh, the perfect segue. Bill, uh, calm your nerves with our friend Dr. Tom and Back to Basics CBD. Just on edge today. Uh, take some of Ray's dog medicine. Ray, you got something for your stupid dog, right? I did, I did. Chills him right the fuck out when he's getting crazy. I gave it to him in his food. You just do uh, one to two doses a day. He fucking chills right the fuck out. There you go. And, Bill, you got some for Ray's mom, right? Yeah, of course. Excellent. Excellent. Oh. Excellent. Oh. Put it right in the mood. Back to basics. Uh, that's B A K, the number two, basics, LLC.com. With every order, you get a free sample. Dr. Tom should be your go to CBD expert and uh, uh, baseball picks, basketball picks, NFL picks. He's laying them out there as well, and he's got a pretty good record. So uh, follow him on Twitter. Back to basics, LLC.com. Uh, Celtics signed Time Lord. To a $54 million, four-year, $54 million extension after 16 games started, 5.7 points, five rebounds per game uh, this past season. Bumped it up to 13 games started, eight points, seven rebounds, 1.8 blocks. Uh, I'll get, I'll shoot it over to you. I have my opinion on this. I shared it with you in the email, uh, so you know where I'm going to come from. Well, Bill doesn't. <laughs> I haven't read the email though. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. So clean slate there, uh, Billy No Eyes. Why don't you tell us uh, what you're thought of uh, with this extension and uh, breaking news? Did we just get a breaking news? Yeah. Josh Richardson re-signed with the Celtics for two years, twenty-four million dollars. Please just kill me now. Two-year extension. Yeah. So this 20... year plus two. No, it's worth... a one-year. It's a one-year extension. Oh yeah, he's a restricted, 24... right? Either way, he's making twenty-four, 24 million. million dollars each year. Ooh. Okay. Um, go ahead, Ray, or go ahead, Bill. I mean, I'm always been a big time Lord guy. <laughs> I've always liked him. Like you, you, you kind of see the potential. I think the, the two blocks a game you're seeing that, I mean, 13 million for a big guy puts him right around nine or no 13th in the league. So he's right outside the top 10 for, um, highest paid big guys. If I'm not, or he's right around there. Yeah. Let yeah. me want you, you want some names or do you yeah. want to finish your take? Can I finish my take and then can go you ahead. give them to me? Yeah. I mean, if he, can actually rub some dirt on it and stay on the court. At, I mean, at least 13 million bucks. I feel like you look at a guy like Adebayo 
you know, if he could morph into half of what he is, you know, 13 million bucks seems like it could be a bargain for, you know, a player of his caliber. I expect his points and his rebounds to go up, especially again, this is year what four, you know, he's still 22 years old, you know, and it seems like you got him locked up for another four years beyond this season at a pretty, pretty reasonable cost. I mean, you look at what they signed Marcus Smart for a couple of years back. It was right around that same deal, 48 million. 50 million bucks came in at the, uh, he's what, 13 and a half, 14 million dollars this year. And it seems like smart is. Yeah. 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 So I, I just feel like, you know, trying to compare to that contract, you're kind of banking on potential. And I think a 13 and a half million dollar gamble on the potential that he's kind of shown, especially in the bubble last year and, and when he's played and and they were a lot better when he was starting on this team. So I think it's could could be a bargain if he's again, if he's on the court producing that. Yeah, sure. The, the biggest question mark is, is certainly health. Um, I don't know about bargain. I thought I had the initial thought when you did. Um, and then I looked, uh, this is just centers. So the center power forward, all positions are kind of fluid now in the NBA, but he is listed as a center. Um, I'll give you some names right around that $13 million mark. Uh, so at 13.3 is Brooke Lopez champion, Brooke Lopez NBA champion, uh, below him is, um, uh, at 12.6 is NBA almost champion Deandre Ayton the guy that Bill can't remember his name on his own team. Uh, Valanchunas is at 14 million. <laughs> Steven Adams, 17. Miles Turner, 18. Uh, going the oh, other I way. I love you, Miles Turner. Derek Favors, 9.7. Serge Ibaka, 9.7. Tristan Thompson, 9.7. So 13 million right now for a center is everybody o- over that 13 million you would rather have than Robert Williams. Except everybody. for Tristan Thompson. He was, oh, he's, he's under. under he's under, yeah. He's under. Uh, everybody over everybody over except for Brooke Lopez and he's under cause he'll get over. So yeah, you'd rather have uh, Tristan Thompson, maybe Al Horford. He's at 27. Um, so uh, yeah. In a couple of years, it'll, it'll look like a deal if he's, if he's contributing and, and playing and, and conquering his 30 per 36 minutes that everyone goes nuts over in the NBA, which per uh, 60, 72% uh, field goal percentage would make him the greatest fucking player ever per on his per 36. That tells you everything you know about NBA per 36 minutes. Time Lord is the greatest player ever according to per 36 minutes. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, Ray, uh, let me give you my take and you can reflect on it. All of the, these signings, Marcus smart, um, I, I, I kind of made my point clear with that um, time Lord in this one, Josh Richardson doesn't really fit my takes. So let me put that aside. These two guys are young to young ish with upside still ish or with, with game to play, but are also expiring deals. Uh, before we came into the season, uh, it was expected that they would go after Bradley Beal or a big time free, uh, free agent next year with the max deal with getting creative in the salary cap. The more that you look at it, the more you try to wrap your head around why would they sign Marcus Smart and Time Lord. Sign in, sign in trades. Is you, it, you're you're going to get a guy through a trade if you're the Boston Celtics. You're not going to go out and sign LeBron James if you're the Boston Celtics. So that started to make more sense to me. Time Lord and Marcus Smart's salary next year adds up to Bradley Beal. So anybody telling you that that salary adds up this year for a trade, that doesn't make sense. Their contracts start next year. So keep that in mind. But next year, I fully expect Brad to be – on on the lookout on the move trying to make a deal and maybe because the nba cap is so convoluted that josh richardson is more valuable in that type of deal at 24 million and but also i don't think that is just the plan i think that there's also this plan b and plan c that hey if we can't make a deal happen these guys are still going to be our role players for tatum and brown and we're going to try and do our best with them and Hey, I may try and get Marcus not to, not to be an asshole in the fourth quarter and try yeah. and try and keep time Lord healthy and on the court. So, because like, let's be positive for a second. Let's be green teamers. If those guys all max out, if the Celtics team right now, all max out, fuck you, Ray, they're a top four team in the East. Now you can't tell me they're not, they are with the role players and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown excel, accelerating another year. They're a top four team in the East and they should compete. And if Jason Tatum can excel to a top 10, then they should be battling for the East in future years. Ideally you want to move those contracts and bring in another piece and, and really be a contender. I think Brad Stevens has set himself up for Chris Gasper calls it asset protection where these guys aren't walking away for nothing. Uh, worst case scenario is they all stay best case scenario is you can flip one or two or all of them for something good. Right. 
Well, no, I, to- I totally agree. But real quick, though, yeah, because obviously you have Kyrie Irving, you've had Al Horford, and who's the other guy that left? Oh, Gordon Hayward, that pretty much left for nothing. You know, you got the uh, trade exception. But, yeah, you have all these guys that leave for nothing. Now you have guys that you can be like, well, fuck that. Well, now if you're going to leave, we have someone to trade for. We got Marcus Smart's really good contract. Like you said, in two years, it's going to be a really good contract. So it wasn't uh, Time Lord. So I think Brad Stevens is looking like what Danny made mistakes on in the past, and he's trying to not to do that with his job now as being a rookie into this whole president of basketball operations so i kudos to brad stevens right now i think he's doing a great job he's looking into the future and being like well if i have to do a sign and trade these guys two these two guys will be a great little piece to add on plus all the trade exceptions that he's gotten you know he's, he's got money to work with yeah though what sucks about the obviously you can't you know combine the trade exemptions but with the sign and trade too you got to remember now you can you can use that to your leverage to get the extra year out of a free agent. So if you look at what they've been doing with, you know, Kemba Walker, Gordon Haywood, even Al Horford, three years option year for the fourth, you get that guaranteed year on that team, especially when you can go to the Supermax, which Bradley Beal can sign, if I'm not mistaken, or close to a Supermax with that fifth year. So now that you have more money right there with an Al Horford expiring deal, Richardson, Time Lord, and um, – smart that's that makes your money work at, at Bradley Beal that's probably going to come in at a deal between 40 and 50 million dollars on a super max deal so I think that's where if you're if you're playing it that way and you're going to try to work with Washington again you're going to you see it more common to get that extra year in free agents especially these big guys I mean that's the biggest thing they're losing out on 50 60 million dollars in yeah. an extra guaranteed year so I mean for the Celtics yeah it's a good win if you think about asset management I mean again if, if they turn out to be, I'm not a big Josh Richardson fan, but again, if you can move him, especially again, a spot expiring deal for next year, that's yeah, your play. Good, that's the play you have to do. That's the play you have to have to make. It's Whether, a good point, Bill. The, the, the money's got to add up in the NBA when you make a trade and um, yeah, that's be 90%, 80 something, uh, almost 90. Yeah. Um, and, and it might be 90. No, no, no. That's 90%. Um, and someone made a, a point on, on the radio too. Look it up, right? If you're the Washington Wizards, similar to a Boston Celtics scenario, are you the greatest uh, free agent destination? Is it really the best to have a, a, a complete blank slate of salary cap space and then go so- try and sign uh, some free agents? And now uh, this 2022 class that was all-star studded is really drying up real fast. Everyone's re-signing with their own teams. They're all, uh, uh, you know, no one. This 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 age of the one and dones is kind of coming to an end. Everyone's signing extensions. So, um, yeah, the idea of Time Lord at 13 million as a trade trip, as a trade trade chip uh seems appealing if you tie that with a marcus smart who say what you want about him he's, he's a good sixth man on a championship team he can be a leader of a, of a bad team and score you 20 points a night um you know those are guys that you can work with and you have to imagine to my point before that that's what brad's thinking about he's thinking about uh, trade uh, a sign and trade not a free agency pull and dumping all of his assets because that was a point I, one of you guys made that Okay, if you dump everybody on your fucking team, you can get Bradley Beal. But then, who are you left with? So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't. That's I don't... my point because Ray wants to trade the farm for everybody, <laughs> including. I read an article today that someone in Bleach Report Schwartz, probably related to Ray, fucking um, was predicting Damian Lillard by Christmas to the Celtics. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we're late here, but I wanted to add this. Stay tuned for uh, the uh, a return of the Oh Dark 30 show. Some extra baseball tack after this oh. with a uh, Grand Slam walk-off win today by the, the Red Mayor. Sox. Uh, there's, the more, there's, there's more to that story, though. Uh, also, uh, check out our last Sunday show, Wrestling with the Doughboy. CM Punk returned to professional wrestling. Ray, you got 10 seconds on that? It was amazing, 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 amazing show. I didn't know if you were going to interrupt me, but yeah, he has been out of professional wrestling for seven years. Made his debut with AEW. It was great. Yeah, it's not soccer. You can talk about it. Okay. Uh, and then uh, lastly, started in a somber note, but rest in peace to Jimmy Hayes, uh, one-time Bruin and NHL professional, 31 years old, passed away. No um, news either. That's so fuck. I, I couldn't believe it when I heard, was reading yeah. this more. I was like, as much as I hate him as a player, dude, 31, yeah. two kids. Uh, like, you don't want to see that. That's terrible. I was like, it's so sad. Heart of Dorchester. Uh, all right. Well, uh, this has been the Silver Mind Sports Show, Fat Tuesday Headline Edition, uh, August 24th. To catch us on Wednesday, we'll be talking some Patriots depth chart, uh, some like some regular Madden talk. You know, where should these guys fucking line up? Quick 20-minute show there. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Uh, old, who calls him the uh, king of Ding Dong City? It was at the fucking Travis. Travis. Okay, Travis Shaw back with the Red Sox after being uh, relegated from the Royals to the minor leagues. The Red Sox bring him in, who the, their Hello, savior no. at first base after Kyle Schwarber can't play first base in the debacle at the deadline. He comes in in the tenth inning and hits a walk off grand slam for the Red Sox. It sounds more exciting than it is because they were up three one in the ninth inning and Matt Barnes is turned into a pumpkin, blew the fuck lead i thought i mean the, it, I, <laughs> I could believe it i was watching it and it it was just so typical for what this team has become over the last two weeks to see matt barnes completely implode like that uh against the rangers by the way who are one of the worst teams in major league baseball uh i think in the four whatever inning it was there was back-to-back errors that they played um when the rangers tied it uh, Bogarts made a diving play up the middle, flipped it to Christian Arroyo uh, to second base, which would have been the second out of the of the inning. I think it was the ninth. And Arroyo tried to barehand it and double play to get out of the game. Fucked the whole thing up, got the bases loaded. That's what led to the to the uh, ground rule double. Look, um, I don't know. I don't know. I I, t- I, I, t- I wrote a blog that the Red Sox are thriving. We've talked about this before. They're going to make the playing game. Heimblum's going to call this a success. It's starting off my prediction right that they took two out of three from the Rangers and they should take two out of three from these shitty teams. But it didn't look good. It didn't look good, I'll tell you that. And I'm not that excited about uh, so you lost off fucking grand slam. 10, yeah, you just lost 10 to 1 on Saturday. Come on. <laughs> Get the fuck yeah. out of here. The one thing that pissed me off, you just wasted a good of all these stars. This is what you wanted to see. I get yeah. up seven out innings it, strong. Yeah. One out one against, run. against a shitty team, but still, I mean, Matt Barnes, where the fuck happened to you? Though since basically the all-star game, he has been a, just a pumpkin, a shell of himself since the regular season. Like before the um before the all-star break, he's been terrible. He was once one of your biggest strengths on your team, and now you don't trust who do you trust in your bullpen right now? You don't, Hold I can't, I don't trust Hold anybody. Well, Whitlock anybody right now. Today. Yeah, Whitlock but that's the first for... time. That's probably the first time in two or three weeks, legitimately. Two I don't three, think he's two or three outings. I don't know about two or three weeks, but yeah, which he's is once couple. a week, I guess. Yeah, you're right. right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the, the, the bullpen sucks. The uh, Martin Perez uh, experiment out there. Just cut that. Fucking okay. Guy. D, uh, D, like send him down. Where's the Seabold kid? He threw another one hitter down in Wu, with the Woo Sox. Let's see him. If this is the bridge year, if you know, there you're. Did you know the Red Sox had a GM, Ray? They do. Uh, O'Halloran, Brian O'Halloran, right? Or is it Blake O'Halloran? What the fuck? I name? don't know. Brian O'Halloran. Uh, yeah, there's a general manager. There's someone with a title under Heim Bloom. He came out and said, if they don't make the playoffs, it's management's fault, essentially. So they're they're admitting to their mistakes. But before they admitted to the mistakes, they made them. They did not commit to this team. We've been over this several times. They didn't spend the money. They didn't go out there. So you've admitted that it's a bridge year. Why not see what you have with the young guys? I've been saying this. I want to see Tristan Cassis. I don't, I don't give a fuck if you waste a year of eligibility. You're the fucking Red Sox. Just pay them. You did it with they, you did it with Bogart, like you did do. it with Mookie. Like, give me a fucking break. You got no, you tried, you signed Travis Shaw to play first base after the Schwarber experiment fucking failed in miserably in your face. Hey, Hunter Renfro's playing okay. Kiki Hernandez is now back at second. Verdugo plays what left and center. You who else? How many outfielders do you have, Red Sox? It's a fucking disaster. It pisses me off. Uh, even though I we've been through this conversation multiple times now. Uh, I don't understand why they're why that bullpen is not full of young arms uh, just going out there throwing as hard as they possibly can because everybody out there sucks. This is not the Red Sox that we all knew since the early 2000s. They're not going out and spending any money. They are looking to save pennies. That's why Hyman Bloom's here. We've talked about this before. They are saving money. That's why they're not going to bring up a, a Christian Kashik because they don't want to lose a year of eligibility and pay him. They no, he's not ready. They don't want to pay him though. That's what I'm saying. It's not they, has anything to do with oh. money with Cassius. He's a fucking. Neither dude. was Duran. Duran wasn't ready. He's yeah, he here. was. No, he wasn't. No, he, he was. wasn't. He clearly wasn't because he's on the bench and he's. Well, and then there was when he got there's here. some there's something too with jumping a, a tier. I it with the the COVID protocols the way they are this year. Pretty sure it's something you can't jump from double A straight to the majors. So you have to make a stop. I. I if he's coming up, it's going to be late, late in the year. And the problem is if he's coming up, they're not going to play him. If they're still in a playoff hunt, these, this is what you're going to see. I mean, yeah. Why? Cause they... Travis Shaw and Bobby Dabacker lighting it up. Bobby Dabacker it dropped sucks, a ball dude. that literally hit his fucking glove today. It cost him a run. Bobby Dalback 
The guy Carabas wants for five more years over Anthony Rizzo. Yeah, Anthony Rizzo. Bobby fucking Dahlbeck. Well, the Yankees the are 10 and one in break. games Good he started. Him. 10 and one break. in games he started. I get it. Tristan Cassius might be not ready and he's a double A player. Uh, fine. Whatever. You want to tell me no on him? I don't. That's fine. But hey, kudos. Snaps. You got the ninth ranked uh, prospect pool in, in, in farm system and baseball. Let's see a couple of these kids. You're reeling, Red Sox. You're reeling. You're, You're not goal. playing good. You're why not playing you, good at why all. Why are you going to see this guy if they're still fighting for the playoff spot? Because uh, everyone that they're playing fucking blows. They, they're not filling the bill. They're not living up to their standards. They're not playing like professional ball players. So give the kids a shot. If this is the bridge year anyway, give the fucking kids a shot. I don't understand the logic. See what here. you got. See what well, you got. And there's there's rumors the uh, Red Sox had instead of the Schwarber deal, the same prospect going to, going to um, the Cubs. That was that deal in place, and the Yankees kind of – you know, engaged them the night before and kind of swooped in on that deal. And it, it, from the sounds of it, the Red Sox were going to take the salary because they did take all of Schwarber's salary. You know, they gave up a decent ranked prospect for Schwarber, but there's rumors now that I was reading that Anthony Rizzo was more in play to the can Red I, Sox. And then the Yankees kind of swooped in late. Can I speak to that? As yeah. I'm angry. Um, first of all, if we're hearing rumors about that now, it's bullshit. Second yeah, all, I, I kind of agree. <laughs> if it's not bullshit, then... It's worse because Heim Bloom, you rookie, you got duped by Brian Cashman, the arch rival, and you you had shoved in a locker and wedged in in not his first time double collared uh, ding dongs right up on your head. With the Yankees came in and fucking owned you. They took your guy. You were telling everybody under the sun that Anthony Rizzo was coming to the Red Sox for a month, and the Yankees came in and fucking took him from you. That's embarrassing. You lost. You lost big. Not only did you lose the guy, you've lost 10 games in the standings in less than a month. They're, they're 23 a, and 9 since the All-Star a, break. If, if this wasn't his second year in the, in the job, that's a job-losing fail. If this is two years from now, you're out. You're fired. You're fired. Maybe on the spot. Get the fuck out. This is your job. Your job is to go and out negotiate your rivals and get the guy you want. And, and not you're not they're not you're not in Tampa anymore. You don't just take the scraps. You go win these negotiations. And he didn't. They lost. And the Red Sox are now going to fight for their uh, wild card hopes. And they're uh, they're going to get there. And then they're going to claim victory. That's my prediction. I'm sticking to it. Uh, any final thoughts on the Red Sox and our O Dark Thirty edition? They're dead. Yep. Agreed. Uh, this has been Oh Dark Thirty, the baseball show from the Simple Mind Sports Show. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.